Hi there, this is Terry from Stamping Magic. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to our monthly global video collaboration. Now we have a few more people joining us this month, so I hope you'll check out all the videos linked in the description below. Our chosen stamp set this month is Daisy Lane. My project for this month's collaboration is a pop-up panel card. I've used several of the images from the Daisy Lane stamp set. Now when you open your card, you see four panels, the middle two of which are popped up. I've chosen to keep these middle two panels raised even when the card is fully open. This stops that middle score line inverting and getting stuck in that position, making it difficult to open and close your card. And then on the reverse you have a panel to write your message. So let's get started. This is the Daisy Lane stamp set. Now I'm using several images from this. The medium daisy and the smaller full daisy, as well as the sentiments and the stem. We also have a new punch that coordinates with the medium daisy. Now, I've gone ahead and stamped most of the daisies I need for this project, but I actually need four of the lighter ones, so I'm going to show you how I created them. I'm starting with Daffodil Delight ink, but I'm going to add a little pumpkin pie to give that lovely two-toned effect. I'm inking my stamp up fully with Daffodil Delight, and then I'm going to take a sponge dauber and pick up just a little pumpkin pie, dab it in the centre of the flower and also on the end of each of the petals and then just stamp it down. And you can see the lovely effect this gives you. I've stamped three different sets of daisies on this sheet, four with the Daffodil Delight and Pumpkin Pie, then another four with Mango Melody and then using Terracotta Tile for the second tone. Lastly, I have two additional daisies and these were created using Pumpkin Pie as the base layer and then my second tone is Cherry Cobbler. All these daisies need to be punched out using the new Medium Daisy Punch. On the back panel of my original card, there's one daisy that I've stamped and then cut out by hand. Now, for this one, we're going to start with pumpkin pie, and then we're going to add cherry cobbler as the second tone. So, as with the medium daisy we did earlier, I'm going to cover it initially with pumpkin pie, and then using a sponge dauber, I'm going to add some cherry cobbler in the centre and then around the edges of the petals before stamping the image. Inside my original card, there are an additional four daisies that I've stamped and cut out by hand. Now, I've already stamped these ready for my new card. Again, I started with the Daffodil Delight and then I use pumpkin pie with a sponge dauber. I'm using both the small sentiments from this set and I'm going to stamp them using old olive ink. I'm going to cut these out using the two smallest stitched shapes oval framelits. Then I'll create mats from pumpkin pie card using the layering ovals framelits. I used one of the square stitched shapes framelits to create the white mats for the panels. And then I used one of the layering square scallop framelits to create a pumpkin pie mat to go under each of them. I'm going to do the stamping for the panels next. I'm starting with the one under the sentiment. I'm using Daffodil Delight ink and the small daisy stamp and I'm just randomly stamping it all over this first panel. 
For this second panel, all I need to stamp is the stem in Old Olive ink. I'm going to add the daisy and I'm using two of the ones I stamped in Mango Melody and Terracotta Tile. So I'm going to add glue to the centre of one of them and then layer the other one on top, just offsetting the petals. I can then add more glue to the reverse and then position it onto my panel. The last two panels are mirror images of each other. I'm starting with the pumpkin pie daisies and I'm going to use a sponge dauber to add some cherry cobbler ink just around the edge of the petals and in the centre of each flower. And I'm going to stamp one twice on each panel. I'm now changing to Mango Melody and Terracotta Tile and I'm going to stamp two more daisies on each panel, one either side of the ones I've just stamped. I can then go ahead and add the four Daffodil Delight daisies that I cut out earlier onto these panels. The smile sentiment needs to be added onto the centre of the first panel that I stamped. I've gone ahead and stamped the back panel and I've added the pumpkin pie daisy that I cut out earlier. If you're in the UK, this white panel should measure 14 centimetres by 9.6 centimetres. If you're in the US, it should be 5 and 1 eighths of an inch by 3 and 7 eighths of an inch. Now the pumpkin pie layer for underneath is 14.4 centimetres by 10 centimetres. Or if you're in the US, it's 5 and a quarter inches by 4 inches. The front panel and both inside panels also have the same measurements and I've gone ahead and stamped the front panel as I did that small panel for the inside. Now the paper is from our new 6 inch Brights stack, it's in Daffodil Delight. All the remaining daisies need to be prepared for the front of the card. And this is just a case of stacking them on top of each other in pairs. And then we're going to shape them. To shape them, you need to hold them between your thumb and forefinger, hold them in the middle, this supports the petals, and then using your bone folder, you will run each of the petals between your other thumb and the bone folder, and this will curve the petals upwards just slightly.
I have two additional layers for the front of the card and this white layer measures 14 centimeters by 4.1 centimeters or if you're in the US five and an eighth of an inch by one and five eighths of an inch. The pumpkin pie layer measures 14.4 centimeters by 4.5 centimeters which for the US that's five and a quarter inches by one and three quarter inches. This front panel needs to be stamped with four stems, one for each of the daisies that we've just created. Two of the daisies are going to be higher up on the panel than the other two and I want to use the bottom part of the stem for these. So I'm using a post-it note just to mask off the top half so it won't be seen behind the daisy's head. I'm now going to place the other daisies onto the panel so I know where the stems need to be stamped. I won't actually set these daisies into position until one of the last things I do when putting this card together. The stamped panel can now be added onto its pumpkin pie mat and then this whole section can be added to the front panel of the card. My card base is a side opening landscape card. This is just half a sheet of standard cardstock scored down the middle and folded. The front panel can then be added as well as the back panel and both inside panels. To create the pop-up strip that goes inside the card, you need a length of old olive cardstock as long as your normal standard card size. So here in the UK, that's A4. In the US, that's 11 inches. Now, for the UK, it will be three and a half centimeters wide. For the US, it will be one and three eighths of an inch. Now I've already scored mine down the centre at 14.85 centimetres because I can't do that with a scoreboard. Now if you're in the US you need to score your card at two and three quarter inches, five and a half inches and eight and one quarter inch. If you're in the UK you want to use your metric plate on your Simply Scoreboard. And on this plate, over on the left hand side, you've got a 7.4 mark and you want to score at 7.4 centimetres on both sides and do this on the reverse. This strip has already been stamped using the small daisy and old olive ink all over the right side. All the small panels can now be added onto this strip. You've got four sections and you position each one in the middle of the section. I'm just using my grid paper to help me centre each one. 
Now when I add the glue, I'm keeping the glue away from the edge, which is not what I normally do. Um, this is just to ensure that it doesn't ooze out onto the back of the panel. You can now fold on the score lines. The middle one needs to be a mountain fold and the other two need to be valley folds. I'm going to position my strip across the centre of the card but you don't have to, it can go higher or lower, whatever you wish to do. The glue goes on each end panel. Now I've also added pencil marks on the edges of my card just to help me position this centrally across. And you take the edge of the strip and you align it with the pumpkin pie layer. So it comes in from the edge of the card. The same with the other side. Okay, remember this is the same length as your card, so if you position it in a bit, that will cause the card to raise up in the centre slightly, which is what I want. Okay, I'm just making sure it's straight and it looks fine. With all the layers that make up this card, it's quite a bulky card, but everything's tucked away neatly inside with nothing protruding outside that edge. Now the next thing I want to do is position the daisies on the front. I couldn't do this before because they would have been crushed while I add the pop-up panel. I've already added dimensionals on the reverse so I can remove the backings and then position them into place. I can now position the friend sentiment panel onto the front of the card. To finish off the flowers on my original card, I added some of our clear faceted gems, but I'm going to use our new designer elements this time. These come in three antiqued finishes, copper, gold and silver, and I'm going to use the silver ones. The completed card is quite bulky, not only because of the lovely daisies on the front, but because of the mechanism inside. Now this will actually fit inside one of our standard envelopes, but that won't offer the card any protection. So the best thing to do is to make a card box to hold it, and that will protect your card and stop the daisies being crushed. My next video will show you how I created this card box and I've included sizes for UK and US. I'll be releasing the video in a couple of days time and as soon as I do I'll add a card at the top of the screen that will link you directly to it. And now back to the finished card. Now this is a really simple design of card to make. 
Mine may have seemed a little more complex, but that's because I included lots of stamping. And here is my original card. Both cards are really lovely, but I do prefer the newer one, I think. Don't forget to check out all the links in the description below to all the other videos in this monthly collaboration. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.